Neil Foreman. I, I am an ALS and I was diagnosed in May of 2015. So uh, back in December of 2014, uh, my voice started to change and my uh, children uh, asked me during the holiday, Dad, are you drunk? I'm like, no, and then one beer, uh, that didn't happen. My uh, primary care provider had uh, ordered a cat hand. And then came back normal, no brain injury. She referred me to a neurologist and I went to MRI, a nerve stimulation. Everything uh, came out normal. And I can't believe that that was over a month or so. I said, I'm done going to see a doctor, no more than that. About two months later, I had a cramp so bad in my abdomen that we went to the ER. And the ER doc mentioned uh, Dr. Elliot. Uh, I'm Michael Elliott, and I'm a neurologist at the Swedish Neuroscience Institute, and I'm also the medical director of the ALS Center. The Swedish ALS program is a multidisciplinary program or clinic, and by that I mean we have multiple providers that are there in a patient-centered model. Uh, our patients will come into a large exam room, often with whoever they want there, because the rooms are big so we can accommodate not only the patient but their family, and we want the families there. Um, and then we have various teams of providers that come in to see the patient and their family and we prioritize or agenda set with the family and the patient about their areas of concern. Uh, so some of the team members would be myself. Uh, I work with a respiratory therapist and a nurse as one unit or team that comes in. Uh, then we also have a physiatrist or a physical medicine rehab doctor along with a physical therapist and an occupational therapist. And then we have a dietitian and a speech therapist who is another team. And then the fourth team would be a social worker, a member of the ALS Association, and a palliative care physician. So those four groups of two and three people each will rotate in and spend time with the patient and their family uh, with the idea that we're just covering every facet of their disease that may be causing problems and then we try to problem solve and troubleshoot and how can we really improve uh, their quality of life and improve their function. The Allen Clinic at Sweden under Dr. Allen's leadership is uh, the Army and the clinic in me where we have had three hours every three months and everything that impacts my life as a person living with ALS is a dress. Normally you'd have to have so many different appointments during that three month period and they make it so convenient for the patient. Uh, Neil has uh, a form of ALS called bulbar ALS. It's affected his speech fairly early on and is also affecting his limbs a little bit now and, and also his breathing. It's, it's such a tough disease and uh, it's, it's such a hard disease to, to live with for the patients and their families. And, and yet, in the midst of that, when you see people dealing with this significant enormous hardship. For so many patients I've seen great examples of courage, of dignity, um, of grace, uh, just of qualities uh, that are really inspiring. Neil is one of these people who is showing a, a tremendous amount of courage and optimism and he's also I think living his life 
to its fullest. And I would say the same with Karen. I mean, she just, the, the, the pair of them, they're really optimistic. And, and I think they're also looking at um, ways to help others beyond their own situation, which is also pretty inspiring. I mean, I'm a, and now they're helping me, and I live my life that way. And I love having a very uplifting aura, you know, enthusiastic, it's very motivating, making people feel good about themselves. And then I uh, got the disease, you know, now my life has a new purpose. Live your life. Do the things that you want to do now. And I'm not saying that because there is no more life, but we should all do that. We should all prioritize and make sure we do the things that we want to do that are important to us. It becomes a little more acute in ALS, a little more um, in front of you, but it's, it's uh, I think, something that I see is super important and people should kind of keep in front of them. The team is here for you. We are here for you. We are here to support you, to answer questions, to provide resources. Um, if there's a problem, we're here to problem solve. You're not alone. You got a team uh, working with you that's here for you. Who I recommend? I would never pay a person to live with Ellen. You are not a contingent. You are not a two to five years um, over a life, man. You are an individual. You are, are now a million to fight. You might uh, as much as you can uh, to move all those numbers wrong. And then in two to five years, believe that you're going to live 25 years and buy every day to live and to meet this disease because the more you fight and the more you believe that you have some control over this disease, you will live to see that day when you are getting a therapy that will cure you. I want to deal with their mind and their outlook because the diagnosis is looming new, but you, you don't have to take a whole lot of thinking. You are an individual, you're not no number, and I want you to believe that. And then, uh, go over to Sweden and get Dr. Ellis, Ellis, Ellis.